Let's talk about RF frequencies. RF radio frequencies, the frequencies that are given off by electronic devices or machinery or uh, anything that has power. It's called RF frequencies. Super easy. There's a lot of videos on YouTube about people recording them in various ways. There's the Soma Ether, there's the LAM Prezor, there's other DIY ways that you can record our frequency. There's like a $6 microphone you can get on Amazon. You can go around your house and record stuff that way. Recording that stuff is cool, but what do you do with it afterwards? I don't know of a lot of people who are just going to sit and listen to a couple minutes of a recording of the RF frequencies from a computer tower in the same way that they might sit and listen to 10 or 15 minutes of a recording of a rainforest sticking with rain rainfall or maybe some traffic or I don't it, it's just different there's kind of a, a line there where there's more stuff on this side than there is on this side and RF frequency recording seems to be on this side in my opinion it's more of a sound design element than it is just a casual listening experience. So let's record some, then let's go to the computer and figure out what we can do with it afterwards. There's a lot of videos on YouTube of people recording them, but not showing what they do with it afterwards. Uh, so I figured I would make that video and we could figure that out together. Uh, so for this video, I'm gonna be using my Zoom H6. My headphones are Sony MDR 7506s because I like them so that'll go in here and then my RF frequency microphone receiver whatever you want to call it is this guy now, this was made in a small batch by a guy who owns a record label on Bandcamp parapsychproductions.bandcamp.com this is called the t oh goodness ta ta juice ta use to Aegis I don't know. electromagnetic microphone uh, he made 10 of them and I got one that's this I'm gonna move this a little bit closer so you can see kind of what I'm doing down here the sounds of the computer tower are gonna be a little bit different depending on where I hold the microphone um, the kind of the area around the fan gives off some really interesting sound uh, so I'm just gonna record that. Well, I'm gonna record the whole thing and you just, you'll, you'll hear it. And it's amazing how even in one unit, that's, you know, you know how big a computer tower is. There's so many different sounds that you can get from it. So let's just give this a whirl. So this is like kind of the bottom of the tower. Moving down a little further. This is down by the fan, or sorry, this is down by the um, kind of the drive bays and the power, where the power, this is like right on top of the plug. I'm probably erasing my hard drives doing this. Let's hear those little like chirps coming in there. That's the sound of my hard drive erasing. Going around the side now. Get this out of the way. Getting up closer to the fan. Now let's go directly over the fan. by the ports.
there's like 12 things plugged in right here. So. Okay, let's go to the side that doesn't really have a whole lot going on. Visually. Isn't that interesting? That's just like a natural filtering effect. That's just straight out of the microphone. Some very video gamey sounds in there. Clearly a lot happening in that region. Let's move further back. Going up towards the power button. We have a USB cable that's plugged into nothing on top here. Now we're at the front of the tower. I have the back of my computer tower facing out because I've plugged so many things in and out. Ugh. This is kind of the bottom of the unit. To this side, going towards the rear with the front. It's interesting, there aren't that many um, components on this side, but it's still picking up frequencies. Okay, so that was uh, that was my entire <laughs> computer, my entire computer tower. Um, yeah, uh, as you can hear, a very wide range of different sounds coming from the computer. So that was just one thing in my house. You probably have a computer as well. If you have a microphone similar to this, uh, you can get most of those sounds yourself. Uh, but I will put a link to the recording in the description and you are free to use any of these sounds if you would like. So I got a brand new template here in Cubase just because I don't really need anything else. Here's the file that we just recorded. Yeah, there it is. What color What color should this be? Is this red? Does this seem red to everybody else? This kind of seems... What color does this seem to me? Electronic greenish? Yeah, this looks good. All right, let's bump up the waveform so we can see it more. So let's just play around with this audio and see what, what we can do with it. Where was that one part where it got super crazy? That was nuts. All right, so that's definitely a highlight right there. I want to see, I mean, obviously there's sound, sound design properties in here for like video games and stuff. Um, I don't know if we could make this musical at all maybe <laughs> maybe it could be music let's just work with this bit here this is really quiet and subtle starts to get you can even like visually you can see it starts to build up intensity something big there and then these more aggressive spikes go away and it goes back to just like the humming like a, a wave a wave like on a synthesizer so this could I mean this I honestly feel like this piece here could turn into a sample instrument. If we kind of tame this a little, let's open up a EQ. I just want this. This is, I mean, this is, this works fine. So you don't need to do, you don't need like crazy stuff. You just use the stock things. That's, if, if you take anything away from this video, use your stock plugins. And I mean, I know I have like, I'm guilty, just as guilty as anyone else. I have a whole bunch of stuff that isn't stock, but learn your stock plugins before you buy new stuff. Because, like, the only EQ I really ever use is this thing. 
And people are, you got to buy this EQ. You got to get this. No, I use this. <laughs> it does the same thing, I promise. So let's turn this into a contact instrument. Filter this. I am going to use... Um, what am I looking for? What am I looking for? Yeah, okay. Archetype. Do you have a tuner? You do have a tuner. Okay. That was sick. <laughs> was not expecting that. Well, let's just keep going with this. I don't think there's any way for me to find out what note this is. I mean, this could turn into like an awesome bass sample. So like I was saying, you know, let's let's see if we can turn this into something usable. RF frequency, what, what do you do with it? You can record it, but then what? How do I figure out what note is being played if a note is being played at all? Maybe not enough of a note is being played for it to recognize. So let's export this. Solo you. Solo! Yeah. Let's just go ahead and export this as a wave. That way we can put it in contact. So there's our original sample. So pitched up it sounds silly. I knew that would happen. Is that usable? Does anybody does anybody care about that happening? It sounds good just as the one note. I mean it doesn't sound good, but it sounds cool. I need to get rid of that clicking, so move that. If you're wondering why that clicking happens, you can, it was, that was a perfect example of it right here. So you can see here, this part where my mouse is, it's a fade in, all right? If I had left this, how do I move? Yeah, okay, over here. So you can see right there is where the beginning of the auto, audio file is, right here all the way to the left. If I keep moving this, it's hitting the fade in but nothing's happening because it's fading in from nothing. So you'll see that the clicking is back. Because it's trying it's trying to fade in from something that isn't happening. You've given the computer a command and it can't follow through because nothing's there. So if you move this over so that it's fading in from the beginning of the audio file, then that'll go away. So that clicking isn't there anymore. So how do we make it better? Can we isolate a frequency? Yes, we can. So let's try that. This time I am going to need uh, a different EQ. So let's get this 10 band EQ here. going I'm going to get rid of Granifier it was a fun experiment but not everybody's going to have that plugin so let's just stick with what we have this could be fun. Let's see if we can turn this into a pad. Let's okay. So let's keep keep that. Let's uh, time stretch it to double. Two hundred. 
So it's twice the original length. Okay, so that's a pretty clear, consistent note. I'm going to give it a little bit more volume. We could probably filter it a bit as well. Still some low end hum in here that I don't like. There we go. Let's do the same thing to eight. So let's export this. Pad note. Go back to contact, delete this, new instrument. Where did pad note go? Right here. Mapping editor. C1. Let's see how you sound. Okay, we're getting somewhere here too. So let's give it some attack. A lot of attack. Give it release and sustain. No release. Now, of course, we need reverb, right? How can you not have reverb? Let's throw another filter on here. Just because I don't think it's quite filtered enough. <laughs> uh, let's put. A delay in here too. We'll just use the stock. Uh, I'll use stock here too for reverb. Uh, what is that under? Reverb. I think Roomworks is stock. I'm not positive, so I apologize. Let's do this. drop this a little bit lower I mean I'm pretty happy with that I, I will be honest a little bit more fine-tuning like literally fine-tuning figuring out what note that is and making sure that it's actually playing notes in a scale and this could actually be usable. I'm happy with that. I hope you are as well. We turned an RF frequency, an RF recording into a pad. Cool. So there you go. I mean, with just a couple of plugins, a couple stock plugins that came with Cubase, I was able to turn just little slices of audio into a bass sample and kind of a angelic pad. I wasn't happy with the way that the bass sample turned out. I'm not saying that it's not usable. I wasn't able to turn it into an instrument in quite the way that I wanted to. It isn't playing a single note. It isn't playing a single enough note in a way that would make it possible for me to turn it into an instrument that I could play like that. But I can still use it as a one-off sample the way that it was processed. I'm pointing over this way because my my studio's right there. My office is right there. Uh, also pretzels. It can still be layered underneath stuff for sound design. Even in music, it's still a usable sound. I just couldn't turn it into an instrument, but I'm still gonna be able to use that little snippet that I made going through Granifier like that. And then the pad is entirely usable on its own. It's just if you wanted to incorporate it with other instruments, you would then have to go in and, and fine tune it so that when you hit a C, it's playing a C. When you hit an F, it's playing an F. If you wanted to play you know, with piano or guitar or, or other instruments. But if you're using that just on its own in a way that it doesn't have to gel with other instruments that are tuned and playing actual notes, it's, it's entirely usable just the way that it was. So just those two little snippets of 
frequencies from an RF recording can be turned into sound design and music. And that's two small slices out of a six minute long recording of all kinds of different sounds. That recording is available in the description. You are welcome to download it and mess with it and play with it as much as you'd like. I would love to hear what you can come up with with that recording. You don't have to credit me or anything if you want to use that. Don't, don't worry about it. I literally just did it in five minutes. I'm not going to come after anyone for that. But do please show me what you did because I, I want to hear what you did and see what you made. So thank you for coming on this little sound adventure with me. Uh, I am excited to do this again in the future. Let me know if you enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what kind of things you would like to see, what kind of things you'd like to see me talk about, and I'll see you next time. Thank you, Mr. Spell. You're welcome.